climb the highest mountain in the world had eluded many mountain expeditions before Tenzing Norgay and Edmund Hillary became the first to conquer Mount Everest. Norgay, together with Hillary, on May the 29th, 1953, were the first people to irrefutably set their feet on the summit of the 29,028 foot or 8,848 meter high Mount Everest. When asked who had been the first to step to the summit, Colonel Hunt, the expedition leader, declared they reached it together as a team. Tenzing stressed the unity of such teams and of their achievements. Another interesting aside of this ascent was that all the photos that existed of the mountaineers on the top showed only Tenzing. When asked why there were no photos featuring Hillary, Sir Edmund replied, Tenzing did not know how to operate the camera and the top of Everest was no place to start teaching him how to use it. Hillary and Tenzing remained friends throughout their lives. Tenzing Norgay was undoubtedly the most qualified climber and proved to be the ideal partner for the tall and strong Hillary. In 1952, Norgay had taken part in two Swiss expeditions led by Raymond Lambert from the southern Nepalese side, during which he and Lambert reached the then record height of 8,599 meters or 28,215 feet. The second pairing in the 14-man party to attempt the summit, Hillary and Tenzing set off on a cloudless morning after spending a night at high altitude on the south peak of the infamous South Col. Encumbered by clothing and oxygen equipment that modern climbers would deem museum pieces, they inched ahead until they reached the most formidable problem on the final ridge, a 13-metre rock now known as the Hillary Step. Hillary jammed his way up a narrow crack, running vertically up the rock, using all his strength and determination. He then hauled Tenzing up, and they moved on with little left to impede them. At 11.30 a.m., they became the first to step onto the summit of the highest mountain on Earth. For years, neither would say who stepped foot on the summit first, but after Tenzing's death, Hillary revealed it was him. By late afternoon, they were back at the South Coal Camp, and on June the 2nd, word of the conquest was broken by the London Times. The British news won huge media coverage, with the British triumph coinciding with the coronation day of Britain's Queen Elizabeth. During the trek away from Everest, a runner arrived bearing a letter addressed to Sir Edmund Hillary KBE. Hillary was reported to be somewhat peeved that someone had accepted a knighthood from the new Queen on his behalf. While Tenzing received the George Medal from the United Kingdom for his efforts with the expedition. For Hillary, the conquest was a beginning rather than an end. Unlike many climbers, he did not see mountaineering as a spiritual experience. After Everest, Hillary led a number of expeditions. In 1958, he and four companions travelled overland in three modified tractors to become the first to reach the South Pole by vehicle. In the 1960s, he returned to the Himalaya in search of the elusive Yeti. And in 1975, he led a jet boat expedition to the source of the Ganges. But most of his energy was devoted to helping Nepal's Sherpa people who live in the shadow of Everest. His Himalaya Trust raised around 250,000 US dollars annually, and he personally helped build schools, hospitals, bridges, pipelines, and even an airfield. He became inextricably tied to the area, not least because his first wife Louise and daughter Belinda died in a plane crash as they flew to join him at a hospital he was helping to build. Tenzing later became director of field training for the Himalayan Mountaineering Institute in Darjeeling. In 1978, he founded Tenzing Norgay Adventures, a company providing trekking adventures in the Himalaya. For this quiet, unassuming pair from different ends of the globe, the big idea of conquering the highest mountain in the world proved to be just the beginning of a friendship that lasted a lifetime.